Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking about where these bass go in the heart of winter. When that water is truly cold, what happens? Why do these fish disappear? Where are they going? Why are they there? And how do you catch them? Let's jump into it. Now all year long, we've been doing this series, teaching you guys where these fish go in the different seasons. We've been following the bass all year. We've made it all the way back around to the heart of winter, the coldest water, traditionally the most difficult fishing. But the good news is you can still catch these fish. I do not care if your water is 55 degrees or 36 degrees, you can still catch these fish. So today I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. We're going to break it out into four groups. We're going to start out talking about ponds. Where do these fish go in those small bodies of water? We have a lot of guys that watch this content that are fishing from shore, fishing ponds, fishing small lakes. I know that you need some help there. Number two, we're going to talk about where these fish go in rivers. Whether it's tidal or not, where do these fish go when there's current? Number three, highland reservoirs, lakes that have that drawdown and have huge deep water access areas. Where are those fish? And then last, lakes like the one I'm on here, where you have fairly stable water, maybe just a few feet of swing. You've got some deep water holes, but it's not a reservoir. It's a natural lake with natural contours. Where do those fish go? All right, pond guys, we're going to start with you. Good news is yours are actually the easiest fish to locate. Now, why is that? Because the body of water is smaller. Whether it's a one acre pond or a 20 acre pond, the fish don't have as far to go. When you're standing on the bank and you're catching nothing, it seems overwhelming. But try to put your yourself in the shoes of a guy on a 50,000 acre lake in a boat that hasn't had a bite in weeks he doesn't even know if he's within five miles of a bass. He has no idea. The good news with a pond is that at least you know you're close to the fish. So here's where you look. If your pond has a dam on it, so it's got a shallow water end and a deep water end, the fish have gone to the dam 100% of the time. That coldest winter period, those fish go to the deepest water and they go to the bottom. They're fishing, or excuse me, they're sitting right at the base of that dam. Now, if that dam is huge, you know, if it has 50 or 60 or 80 feet of water on it, they won't be at the very, very bottom. They're going to be part way up and they're going to be on the edges near the dam, but they may still be deep. It depends on the pond. They could be in a shallow pond. They might only be five or 10 feet deep. In a deep pond, they might be 30 or 40 feet deep, but they're right in that deep corner of the lake. Now, if your pond doesn't have a dam, if it's a natural lake, this is the interesting part. Now it's bad news for a guy that can't reach center, but if it's a natural lake, where that lake just has a subtle shape to it, they will sit in the lowest central point. They will sit in the deepest water. So if it has a bow to it and the middle is five feet, they'll be in five feet. If it has a bow and the middle is 20 feet, they'll be in 20 feet, but they'll sit right out on the bottom. If there is structure out there, if there's rock, if there's wood, if there's anything like that, they will lay right up touching that structure. Bass love to relate to cover year round. They love it even more in the winter time. In winter, it allows them to ambush without expending a bunch of energy. If they're up against cover, at least from one direction, they have that benefit of seeing what's coming without it seeing them, they can ambush easily. So if there's cover available, they'll be right up against it. If there's not, if it's just a mud bottom, they will literally be sitting with their belly in the mud on the bottom, right in that lowest point. It's that simple. Now, if your pond is man-made and it is truly flat, you know, like a neighborhood pond where you've got a wall on one side and it's five feet deep forever and a wall on the other side, 
if there's nowhere that's beneficial, there's no deep water access, then they will actually pull to the shore and get in the cover. So three different scenarios there. And next guy. And here at the end, we're going to circle back. I'll give you a couple bait recommendations as well. But the next guy, the river guy, the current guy, yours is unbelievably predictable. That's the great news. For you, your fish are going to do everything they can to get out of the current. So if you're in an older river that has oxbows, you know, little arms that leave and run back that have been cut off, so it's dead slack water. If there's any sort of depth in them at all, the fish will pull into those oxbows to get out of the current. Now they might not go way back, they might only go 30 or 50 or 100 feet into them, but they want out of the moving water. So they'll be in those oxbows. If you don't have any of that, then where your river makes your bends, it swings anywhere that they can get on the edges of that and get out of the current, they will be flat on the bottom in that calmest edge, just inside of the seam in the calmest water, flat on bottom. Why do they do that? Because as current is moving downstream, most of the year, your basket right up on the edge, right? You know, in really fast water, they'll hug right up against cover. They'll sit behind rocks or up in the grass. It's because it's slowing the flow and they can sit behind it and jump out neat. Well, the same is true of the bottom, whether that's five feet deep or 30 feet deep, as that water is moving across the bottom, it's slower, just like up on the edges than it is in the middle. So in the winter time, that bottom, will be really stable, it's that slower water. It's the most insulated from the high and low temperature changes up at the surface. So they will go to the bottom on those current edges and they'll do everything they can to stay out of the current. So whether you're in a delta system, a tidal system, or an actual river, your entire goal this winter should be get away from current and fish deep the fish are going to sit in the holes. Now that can vary, you know, in a system where it's only 15 feet deep, they'll sit in those 15 foot holes. But if we're talking about a giant river where you have 100 or 200 foot deep holes, you know, some old natural river, they will not be in the bottom of these giant holes. They'll hold on the edges. They'll find that natural depth line that they like, maybe 20, 30 feet. But once you find them, as you work up or downstream, those fish will continue to be at that same depth in those same current pockets all the way down through it. It's incredibly consistent. All right, number three, you guys in those highland reservoirs. What makes you different is a highland reservoir tends to have a big drawdown going into winter. They suck a lot of water out of those places and that will force fish to come out off the bank and suspend. Now that has already happened. Your fish have already gone through that process. So what are they doing now? After they finish suspending, once that water stabilizes, when it finds its common level for the winter, those fish will do a couple of things. They're looking for deep water access. That's the biggest thing. Deep water access is key and structure is key. So for a Highland Reservoir guy, the two places that I want you to look, now there are some others, but the two that are going to be your best bets, is as that water comes around a corner, you get that bluff wall. You follow that old natural river channel through your lake. You find those big sheer rock bluff walls. Those fish will hug up against that wall. You wanna fish that slow and deep. The fish will move up and down that wall just a little bit throughout the day, but not very much. The colder it gets, the less that they move. So if it's truly cold water, they're going to be deep and they're not going to move at all. Once you find the depth of those fish, an ideal bluff wall is a wall that bottoms out at that depth. So if you find them on one wall and your wall goes to 100 feet of water, but you're getting all your bites at 30 to 40 feet. You go to the next wall, they're at 30 to 40 feet. Find a bluff 
head upstream, up your lake, until you find a bluff wall that bottoms out at 30 or 40 feet. And those fish will be lined up right there at the bottom of that wall. And they'll hold there all the way until you start getting those big springtime storms. Now, the next place for you, actually I'm gonna give you two more. One is as those fish have pulled off, they followed out off those flats and out off those long tapering points out towards your original creek channels. So the ends of flats and the ends of those long points. When you get out there to where they finally break off and they start rolling into the river channel itself, the creek channel, right on that roll off is your other spot. That's where those fish will gather for the entire winter. So you might have a long tapering point that's all mud that runs for 50 yards or 100 yards or 500 yards, but eventually it breaks and it goes to the deep. Right on that corner, if you can find structure, if it's all mud, but you find one patch of rocks, that is your spot. They will set up right on those rocks. They will be there the entire winter and it is clockwork. Those fish can be really, really easy to catch. So whether it's a long tapering point or a flat, flats where it comes out, you know, a spawning area where you know those fish are going to be, clear out on the end where it finally breaks off, same thing, find that structure. If you can't find structure, it's going to take time. You just need to cover those edges until you find that little contour that's different that those fish are bunching up on. Now, last but not least, the big natural lake. This is a complicated one, but it's what we face every day. In a big natural lake, the fish will tend just like a pond. Think of it as a giant oversized pond. The fish will pull into the holes. They will pull to the deeper water access and it needs to have rock or structure. The fish want to sit up against that structure. Now, unlike a pond, these fish also have to compete. So they are going to be looking for the best spot. So that's where it's tough in a giant lake. I'm telling you, go look in those deep holes. You know, here on, we're on Clear Lake. Here on Clear Lake, Henderson or Shag Rock or some of those famous winter spots. There are these aggressive rock walls that drop down into really deep water. And in this lake, it's some of the deepest water in the whole lake. So for us, these fish will migrate big distances in the fall and then they settle down in those holes. The bait fish do the same thing. See, the food is coming to them. The food gets in that hole, the bass get in that hole. They've got rock that they can sit up against. So that's where they set up. They can eat all the way through the winter without even moving. And then in spring, they start making their shift back towards the spawning grounds. The tough part in a big body of water is you can find those spots that seem perfect and they have no fish. That's because in a lake this large, the fish want to gather in the best spots. So once you've got the pattern, once you know what you're looking for, just keep looking. It's not you. You'll go to a spot that seems like it's got everything it needs and they're not there. Find another one, they're not there. Find another one, you find the bait fish and you find all the bass that should have been in all three of those spots all gathered and they're not going to move for months. Once you find them, you're set. So that's the tough part for the guy in the big water is understanding that these fish will gather on the very best spots because they have to compete for food. They're not the only fish there. There's going to be a number of fish and a large amount of bait, a large amount of food to get through winter. So they really need the best spots that they can get. So they don't settle for second best. They find that best spot during fall. We've already passed all this and now they're settled down in those holes. The second place that you're going to look if your lake doesn't have those holes is every natural lake will come out and eventually you'll find some sort of a break. Typically that break is hard bottom, it's rock. Whether that's chunk rock, big boulders, or it's hard pan, you'll find that transition because natural lakes have had flow coming into them, mud coming into them in the spring, 
every year forever. But those hard pan spots will kind of hold their own. That stuff will wash away from them. It'll leave that hard exposed bottom. Those fish will just gather to that stuff. So you can find those edges where it rolls off. You find that hard structure, you've got them all the way through winter. So four completely different environments, all not complicated once you understand them. The pond guy, it's tough because you've got a small body of water, it's cold, your fish don't wanna move a lot, but at least you know you're on the fish. For you guys, something like a Ned Rig, if you wanna finesse, is a fantastic option. Down in the video description, I'll link you all the different baits that I'm gonna talk about, but just two per scenario. That pond guy, that Ned Rig is a dynamite option because you can fish it so slow, just dead stick it, and it gets a lot of bites. The second one for you would be a jerk bait. The jerk bait is a bait where you can be aggressive, but then you just let it sit. So it covers water really slowly. It also draws a reaction bite. And in a pond environment, that sound will travel a really long way and those fish will raise up to that bait. So it's a great way to get them to react. And if you choose a bait with the appropriate depth, you're never going to get stuck on bottom. For the guys in a river scenario, the jig is probably the best bait that you could possibly have. That jig will get down, it'll hold bottom well in that current. You can go to a heavier jig. If you have to fish in the current to get down to that calm water, that heavier jig will work well in that scenario. A river fish tends to stay stronger year round than a lake fish because they spend their life fighting current. So for you, that fish is gonna pull. So a jig with a good hook will go a long way. Then the other way that I like to fish that current, again, is that jerk bait. That jerk bait where you rip it, rip it, and then if there is current, it'll just slow drift. If you found those good backwater pockets, it'll be dead still. Those fish that are used to spending all their time in current aren't used to food just sitting in front of them. Their food's always moving. If you can get them in, in that calm water and get a jerk bait to sit over them, they can't resist it because it's the only time of year that a meal is that easy. You Highland Reservoir guys, man, you have so many options depending on how deep your fish are. Those bluff wall fish, that Ned Rig is a killer. The Ned Rig or the tube, both dynamite options. The hair jig, dynamite option. Those are the traditional baits. The blade bait though, smashes fish in that scenario. Absolutely smashes them. Now, if those spots where you're rolling off are shallow enough to throw a cold water crankbait, you need to be doing that it will work. But not every lake has that structure shallow enough to be reached with the crankbait. Some highland reservoirs, those fish will set up in 10 or 15 foot, it's perfect. Other ones, they're gonna set up in 20 or 30 or 40, and it's all about that blade to get those fish. Last, natural lake guys, you have options. Up there on those edges that roll off, cranking is a great option. A rigging is a great option. You can get that reaction bite. You can also throw a swim bait. When those fish get down in those holes, jigging is a dynamite way to go. And so is spooning. Something that we do in the fall, we don't talk a lot about in the winter, but that spoon can be a killer option when those fish are sitting in those holes. Guys, I hope this video helps you. Winter can be a struggle if you don't understand where the fish are. But once you understand, it's an awesome time of year to get out there and fish. It's relaxing. There's no one out here. It's calm, it's peaceful, it's cold, but it's peaceful. And when you do figure out where those fish are and you start catching them, and you realize that you can catch big ones this time of year, it will quickly become one of your favorite times of year to get on the water. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.